Okay, I think Abdul, we can we can just start. So good morning once again, and uh, our sincere apology. Uh, when we started, we don't have much number, and uh, we experienced some technical issue with audio. So I I had a look at the the learning management software earlier this morning, and I. I have a mixed uh, reaction, uh, to be sincere with you, uh, because as I said earlier, this program is not just aimed for getting certificates and getting a grade, it's for learners to be able to learn some new skills. Yeah, when I look at the, the numbers uh, shared, uh, through the system, I observed that the first CE have the highest number of visitors, over 15,000 visitors, while the other links have just around, I think the highest we have is 8,000, uh, followed by the one with the 5,000. So please uh, don't worry too much about the assessment, worry much about the learning content. Because if you cannot see the, the learning content or you cannot download the learning content, I don't see why you have to join this course. So please see why you have to join this uh, Remove your focus towards the learning, I mean, towards certification, but focus more on learning the content. Thank you. So yesterday I had a look at uh, what we covered. I watched the audio, so today I'm going to improve based on that, as well as uh, expand the content we said yesterday. So if you remember, uh, I said to you yesterday, we'll do some pulse check for today. Uh, we'll look at uh, food for thoughts. Probably that would inform our further engagement. Then uh, I mentioned social dimension of the digital divide yesterday. So I'm going to talk a bit about uh, this uh, context today. Probably we can spend up to 10, 15 minutes looking at the social dimension of the digital divide. And uh, after that, we'll look at some foundational uh, framework for ict for d Yesterday, we talked about the foundation of ict for d but today we'll deepen uh, the conversation. And you know, yesterday as well, we talked about ICT and socioeconomic development. I uh, will also expand on that today, but we'll focus on a good case study of ICT intervention that made good sense, good sense. And if we have much time, we'll look at uh, why some of the ICT intervention fell, and probably we can we can learn a lesson. And I'm looking at the uh, possibility of looking at uh, the ICT for the intervention at an individual level, at an institutional level as well. Uh, because not only government or companies or NGO deploy ICT for development. Even you, as an individual, uh, you deploy ICT for many reasons. Uh, maybe for, for your economic growth or maybe for your uh, social growth. And we may do some evaluation, probably, uh, and maybe we look at the might of ICT for D. So the reality is... Uh, most of the ICT for the champion assume that as soon as you put computers in the school, uh, the learners will begin to learn. And uh, if you put uh, 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 computers or you automate um, hospital, uh, the doctors will begin to, to learn better. I mean, to, to give quality healthcare delivery. So there is a lot of mind around that. So this is just a context of our area of discussion and I plan to spend one hour 15 minutes already we lost uh, almost 30 minutes so I don't think uh, I'll waste much time here but if you have um, uh, QR code scanner I would love you guys to, to scan this QR code uh, while I run my mentee I have someone to, to do with you maybe for two things so if you have time uh, scan this two out. If you scan, uh, I believe it will take you to, to somewhere. Uh, then we can do some exercise before we go. So I would suggest you scan this QR code. 
uh, if you can each you know so if you don't have the qr code uh go to i mean i've opened a new page menti.com uh scan the qr code if you can if you cannot scan the qr code just go to menti.com menti.com and put this uh this code if you have the if you don't have the uh, if you don't have the if you have you can go on there okay. see there you should have something like you should have something like that yeah yeah i think people are responding already yeah i think four people responded i think five uh so let's respond uh what are the major what is the major problem challenging the, the world today so i can see five responses only we don't want to waste much time here uh doing this but uh if you can have more people responding it would be nice so how many so we have about 65 so we can do better we can we can have okay seven eight uh eleven yeah, I can see new new words, lawlessness, insecurity, poverty. But I said, this is not Nigeria. What are the major problems militating the world now? Uh, not Nigeria. Uh, I mean, global issue. I think corruption uh, is uh, more visible. Uh, AI is prominent from the list. Racism, lawlessness, uh, critical infrastructure, decline in the economy yeah corruption i think corruption is more visible i don't think there is corruption in china very visible as we prom prominently put it there okay so i will allow maybe for 30 seconds then i'll go yes uh, racism yeah okay so what comes to your mind the first time you hear ICT for D? I want you to respond to this. I want you to respond to this. What comes to your mind the first time you hear ICT for D? What comes to your mind the first time you hear the word ICT for D. Development, communication, technology, development, uh, technology, development, teaching ICT, technology. I think we're getting good response from this. Development, communication, uh, information, uh uh do you mind when you hear about ict for d yes 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 yeah yeah communication mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good. So we are getting more response. More response are coming. Yeah, more response are coming. So we have 150 watts. So technology uh communication innovation future uh climate realities inflation organization uh i think this is becoming more interesting 
yeah but i'm getting worried about the word i'm getting when you hear ict for d is not the technology it's not the communication yes I think I like the development, I like the innovation, but I wanted to see innovation more prominent. I wanted to see uh, good governance. I wanted to see, uh, I mean, to, I mean, to learn new things. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes yes okay so i think we have good response uh, i will go to the next question okay so what is the major problem militating nigeria now okay so i have the last question for you can ict be used as a potential tool to address development problem or problems Strongly agree, agree, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting good feedback. So I think majority of you are hopeful that ICT can. Yeah. So none of us disagree or have a balanced feeling, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for taking part in this uh, exercise. And I'll go on uh, to my PowerPoint. So when you look at this, I think there is a lot of uh, issues around correlation with what we have. You know, this is done by someone, and from what we can see, the major, the major prominent uh, words from the exercise done somewhere uh, is digital platform, its impact, its framework, its multi-level perspective. So, but why we do this is because I want us to think about or turn off our think, thinking or attention uh from the word ict so when you hear ict it's not just about the computer it's not just about the network it's not just about the portal it's about the development so any ict intervention not accelerating human development or accelerating growth or expanding human right is not an ict for d and that's why majority of our ict for d intervention fell uh, because most of the intervention are focused on the tech part, the, the left hand, I mean the company, the left hand side, not uh, the, the D, which is after the, 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 the ICT. So to be, to be honest, as we progress, we need to debate our attention from the technology, you know? So if you don't do that, uh, we'll keep repeating the same failure. So practically when you hear ICT for D is how do we improve socio-technical development or socio-technical uh, transition uh, and the rest. So maybe I'll ask this question. Uh, I think we have done this earlier in the exercise. I want us uh, by the end of this lesson for today, we should be able to identify the biggest problem challenge in the world today, which I think most of us have done. But from, if I can remember from what you put, uh, the most pro uh, word uh, in the problem meditating the world, uh, as we had uh, in the exercise, is climate change, uh, corruption, racism, poverty, insecurity, uh, global warming, uh, and the rest. 
Then uh, we also asked this question, what are the major Nigeria's key development related problem? I think we also did that, that is a correlation between what we are experiencing in Nigeria and what we are experiencing uh, globally. And uh, as we progress, we should be able to see if ICT could be used as a potential tool to mitigate this problem. And I think from the quiz I, I published earlier, I think majority of you strongly agree that ICT could be used as an enabler uh, to change our status quo. And I've never seen disagree or maybe a balanced feeling that you think ICT can do and cannot do. So which is really something good. Uh, so all of you that are part of this program, you are very optimistic about what ICT can do for us. Then probably by the end of today or end of this week, we should be able to know or to see to what extent ICT can help fix these problems and deliver development goals. I think we have said this earlier, any ICT, if you are changing a new uh, phone to the latest iPhone, we are buying the latest laptop. You need to ask yourself, why am I getting this? Why am I getting this? Uh, what this new change of device will improve uh, in my life or in my business or in my uh, social being? And, you know, it is very critical you do this. You examine the money you are spending, the opportunity cost. What if uh, you invested the money in doing something different? Will that address uh, some of your uh, existential threat? So, so that's the reality. I think most of us will need to uh, really focus on and think about it. Then when we finish this course, we should be able to apply a conceptual framework to understand ICT for the practice. And probably we should be able to understand uh, what are the policy issues around ICT for D. At the same time, probably we should be able to have uh, some perspective about what is ICT and what is not ICT for D. Because the ICT for D profession is not just for the technologies. The ICT profession is a multidisciplinary profession. You see, majority of the practitioners from communication, from media, from development uh, sector, from energy, uh, because you cannot do ICT if you don't have good energy. Uh, you see, doctors been taking part in this profession to provide telemedicine and telehealth, uh, as well as uh, even uh, teachers that are providing digital teaching and learning to a digital platform and not necessarily online. So in ICT for D is not just online, it means doing things online, doing things offline, uh, doing things in hybrid mode. As far as you are leveraging digital technology tools, mobile phone, radio, television, uh, iPad, uh, Kindle, and the rest, name it, loudspeaker. I've seen how during COVID-19, uh, many African countries use loudspeaker that we have in the mocks and in the church to broadcast learning. I've seen this in Congo, in Burundi, and less resource countries, uh, because we have loudspeaker in most of our churches and mocks, and we only use them just during prayer time, I think for the Christian, mainly during Sunday service and a few other uh, section you use uh, to offer prayers. Uh, but for the Muslim, we use this loudspeaker just five times a day, and it doesn't last up to 20 minutes. So when COVID-19 came, everyone go back to home. Uh, then this community say, oh, why not we begin to teach ABCD? Why not we begin to teach uh, multiplication table to the kids that are around this neighborhood? And I've seen many case studies from Latin America where school buses are converted into internet access hub, uh, where these buses are equipped with wireless access point and loudspeaker. They move along the neighborhood, they park in the neighborhood, and they announce that we are here, and children connect with their tablet. And I've seen how, even in Nigeria, in, uh, in, in Northeast, I've seen how one of the NGOs that I have uh, worked with uh, distribute MP3 devices with the lesson and learning. And even in most of our radio station, we have lesson ongoing. So basically, we should be able to see how these technologies, and I have to give a disclaimer here. Uh, ICT for D don't just limit to 
the digital technology only, it could be analog. You know, I've mentioned loudspeaker, I've mentioned MP3, uh, I've mentioned, and if I name it, any means of communication where ideas, knowledge, or data, or information could be transmitted uh, to support human development. And probably we should be able to analyze the general contribution of ICT. Uh, I mean, I've said this earlier to, to personal development. Uh, if you are uh, a health worker, uh, beyond just using the tool uh, to support you to deliver services, the tool should be able to give you less stress. Uh, I, I'm a teacher. Uh, I'm using this tool to teach, uh, to interact with my students without having to use chalk, without having to sweat standing. I'm sitting now doing this class because the tool I have supports me to have a comfort. And I always tell my colleague, my colleague that there's no need for teachers to, to sweat, you know? Uh, they, your arm feet don't need to sweat. You don't need to release white fluid from your mouth if you are teaching. The ICT tool should be able to give you opportunity to teach with ease. If you are spending three hours teaching, if you deploy ICT for the tool, you should be able to teach within one hour. Ordinarily, I've said this earlier, if I'm doing this teaching or this course first to first, it takes four to five days intensive, five hours a day, and we have to stay in one place. But because of the digital technology that we have, we are doing this within a short period, and majority of you are not connected. But immediately after this class, uh, I'm going to share the video. So many of you can catch up, you can pause and take notes. So that's a possibility, that's the opportunity as it is for D is given to the individual, to the national, as well as even the international development. So if you are thinking about ICT, don't think about ICT in a myopic approach, think it big, uh, but uh, I am every good ICT must support individual and must support uh, national uh, agenda. Then probably we should be able to analyze the role of policy. Policy is key. I've said this yesterday. In Nigeria, we're not doing bad in terms of policy. Uh, we have the national ICT policy. I think it's almost uh, 12 years old and recently the federal government through the ministry of communication and NIDA uh, developed national digital economy strategy so moving away from the ict because they see ict now as ubiquitous anyone can go to market and get a sim card and be online but earlier on getting a sim card is a luxury but now almost every ict you think about is ubiquitous you don't need to go very long process you don't need to be a scientist or an engineer you ict so because it's ubiquitous so we have this national digital economy policy in nigeria we have the ai policy so that there is no ambiguity in implementing ict uh in nigeria there is blockchain there is cloud computing cyber security policy national ict policy for education how can we use ict to support learners in fact beyond that uh, I was involved in developing a policy for Nigeria that have to do with the national digital learning policy because digital learning is now becoming very common thing that any one of us can do. So the federal government didn't leave that uh, vacuum open. Uh, they fill it up, uh, airtight, everything covered, regulated. So policy have a very uh, significant role in implementing ICT for D. Then strategy beyond policy. Policy is a vision. It's a mission for you to get it into the field you need to have some strategic uh, direction so and also operational intervention the government need to put some palliative uh, they need to put some incentives to, to support uh, early investors into uh, this infrastructure if you put a 4g network tour uh, in a community where they have just about 50 uh, residents that it would not bring revenue uh to the telco but because government want to go on to the no one left over strategy uh, you see almost every location have this store provide the service even though the telco are not getting good revenue i think nigeria is uh, striving very hard to see that everyone been connected with the national broadband policy nigeria set up and the plan is to accelerate uh, 4g at the same time, 5G. And as you all know, Nigeria know they carry last. So I think in terms of connectivity, yes, we're not doing bad because of the intervention government put together. 
But in terms of quality of service, I think it's an area that we may have to uh, discuss uh, going forward. So, and maybe after this uh, engagement, we should be able to identify some roles around ICT for the intervention. Who are the ICT for the champions? Uh, who need to do what? Who need to do what? And who need to support what? Uh, because every stakeholder within the ICT for D cycle have a role. It's government role to put a policy and ensure the policy has been put uh, nicely into operation. It's also the role of the practitioners to ensure ICT for D are implemented in a professional and ethical manner. And it must be sustainable and resilient, and it must be inclusive, no one left over. Then it's a role of the users to ensure that this technology has been used based on intended uses. Uh, for example, I work in a university. I ensure that there is internet in my university, there are computers, but I cannot regulate, or I cannot control what people do with the computers. If they use the computers just to watch YouTube or to watch pornography uh, or to use this tool to accelerate their learning, it's their own cup of tea. But from the background, uh, we could be able to monitor or tweak or adjust the amount of bandwidth being used by these users. That's the only thing we can do. So users have a big role to play in ICT for the intervention. If government decide to put uh, online taxation system, if user decide not to go to the online pathway, is there a cup of tea? If government decides to put digital learning platform and the learners are not going there, the government have no uh, way to enforce that even because it's, it's their own personal uh, consequences. But in some instances, many countries are putting incentives just to accelerate digital transformation. Uh, I know many countries are uh, encouraging people to go online. If you go online and do this and that, you have this and that and that coming your way. So. I believe by the end of this call, we should be able to identify the role of each of the uh, stakeholders in the ICT for D, and we should be able to identify the gap and challenges each of these stakeholder experience while uh, interaction uh, or interacting with ICT for the intervention. And we should be able to talk more around SDG. I'm going to talk more about this as we progress. So let's do uh, a pulse check uh, because I'm not a doctor. But uh, practically, uh, whenever I'm doing this type of engagement, I do a pulse check. Uh, because when you go to doctor, doctor don't just give you chloroquine injection or analgesic or whatever injection. They have to go through uh, your temperature, uh, your uh, blood pressure. They have to ask about your family history. Uh, your lifestyle, then they can give you uh, some intervention. So always it's important if you're doing ICT for the intervention, do your post it. Ask the community that you are given the laptop or the tablet. Uh, ask the community or the country you are given a uh, digital transformation tool to ask if it fits in within their lifestyle or within their expectations. So, and probably uh, we may be able to look at I think we have said a lot around what can we do with ICT for education. I think the potential for ICT in education is really massive. I think it's the most visible thing we can say now around what ICT uh, can do for development. Health and nutrition, yes. Uh, we have seen how these uh, tools are being used to generate or produce uh, new foods. Uh, because now we have an issue, even in Nigeria, uh, we have Minister of Agriculture with additional role, uh, food security. How do we achieve food security? And I think as you progress, as we do some search, maybe how can ICTs support health and nutrition in Nigeria? You could see uh, barriers coming, things coming off your way. Environment, I think we'll talk more around this, how ICT can be used to mitigate or to adapt to the climate change which is one of the major challenge uh, you guys have put in the, in the earlier exercise we had. Then businesses, I think, is very visible. Uh, banking industry in Nigeria and even FinTech uh, are the major beneficiary of ICT uh, in their operation. Uh, because uh, if you look at the number of mobile money agents, 
and the amount generated by these uh, businesses is massive. You take Paystack, Flutterware, uh, Money Point, uh, name it. Uh, they are providing job opportunity for the youth, uh, making ease of doing business much more easier, reducing amount of uh, arm robbery. Because nobody now carry cash, you know. Uh, and if we have to wait until bankers give us. A usual bank account, Nigeria will wait for too long. Because I had a check yesterday, and Nigeria we have just about 65 million uh, bank verification number, and that means uh, only about one sixth or one fifth of Nigerians have a real bank account. But in principle, if you have MTN SIM card, automatically you have a bank account. You know, most of these mobile money agents they call them Momo don't need to go through a very serious KYC to have you uh, getting your bank account set up. So businesses are really major beneficiary of this ICT for the intervention. And in reality, that is supporting economic empowerment. Uh, because if you look at the number of the users or the youngsters getting their daily bread from uh, money points uh, or maybe uh, 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 easy, I mean, easy money, you call it, uh, that and that is supporting the economic growth. And then good, good governance. I think a lot of work has been done around this in Nigeria, but we can do more. Uh, we have seen how uh, bank verification number, IPPIS, uh, GIFMIS, and the rest, supporting government to save money. And probably as a progress, we could see how uh, corruption will become uh, less more visible because in the exercise we had, most of you mentioned corruption as a major problem militating in Nigeria. Then how do we improve security? Uh, because the number of police we have in Nigeria is not enough. Uh, if you take the number of police that are carrying Madame's back or guarding or guard house, in reality, we don't have much now. Even the military, you can see military taking Madame's back. Uh, driving or gas car and the rest. Uh, I mean, we see all these jobs about the internet. So if you take them off, and this is the area where I and my mentor, Professor James, work around uh, uh, with the Defense College and Mathematical Center, where we are modeling uh, ways through which ICT could be used uh, to reduce insurgency. Elsewhere, the security is no longer leveraging guns and machine guns. Uh, war now is more of a cyber warfare. And for you to have a safe nation, you need to have digital technology put together to safeguard your environment. And I know most of you in your houses, uh, you have CCTV camera, uh, you have valve wire connected to the electricity, to a mini computer, so that you can deter intruders from coming to your house. Because with ICT tools, you don't even need to allow for investigation. And that's why in our neighborhood we have police uh, posts. You know, do you have checkpoints? So you don't need to go through checkpoint if you have a very, very zero digital infrastructure. And, and I mean, elsewhere, if you travel, if you see a policeman, a British policeman, probably he's equipped with over 10 to 6 cameras taking photo of who is moving, taking audio signal, sending back to the data center, processing the using machine learning and neural network to prepare any emergency and you have seen how um how uh, youngsters that are intended to put a bomb or create a mayhem in a society been trapped i mean if i'm a student personnel by just going through some people's facebook or their whatsapp status i can just take them to interrogate them uh, because if you run machine learning and sentiment analysis in social media you could be able to drive some bias of what people are saying. And with that, you should be able to put a policy system in your country. And I've said this many times, if I have opportunity to talk, you cannot fight security with a gun now. You fight security with system, with data and evidence. So you have to go into diagnostic approach. Don't even allow the mayhem to happen. And a lot of case studies are out there for Nigeria to learn and even for we for us as individuals, if you put a CCTV camera in your house uh, with a sensor, with a intrusion detection, with motion sensor, as intruders jump into your house, uh, 
maybe there is cash organization, maybe there is motion sensor. It makes an alert. And that guy will just have to go. It's an early one for him. Then gender, I think majority of our sisters are not part of this digital economy. But how do we uh, support women to be more active in this economy? And what are people with special need? How are we taking them through this uh, program? And I asked this question last time when we had meeting. So we have gender and inclusion coordinator for this ideas program. How are we going to support this? I think it's a point of discussion, see how we can support them. Then geography, what of a lady? A lot of work going forward need to focus. And that's why I would love to see AI uh, supporting uh, a hard to reach area. So uh, you, I want to uh, a brainstorming section at your free time, you know, reflect how can we use ICT to support all these uh, particles. And I think we have a lot of case study uh, for us to learn. Then let's talk about SDG. Uh, you know, I, I've been talking about this word since yesterday. Uh, we have 17 goals set up a uh, very long time ago. And we just have about six years to get to the expiration of these goals. Uh, the reality is the United Nations and other stakeholders, uh, our countries, is a signatory to the SDG. And practically, uh, almost every agency in Nigeria have a role to play towards actualizing uh, these uh, 17 goals. So, but if I ask this question, do you think in the next four years we may have no poverty in Nigeria? Can we have zero hunger in the, by 2030? Can we have good health and well-being? Can we have quality education? When I said this to you yesterday, in my state where I came from, only 1% of the youngsters are achieving minimum proficiency level. Can we use this tool to accelerate this learning poverty? I mean, to reduce this learning poverty. Gender equality, clean water. You know, how can we have affordable energy? I've seen many of you complain about, about power, about electricity. How can our young, how? How can we have a decent job for these youngsters? Because unemployment is high. Inflation is at its high. I think about 35%. Then how can we have, you know, quick response to climate action? What if we have flooded? What if we have fire? What if, how can we stop flooding? I think I've said this very, very well. How do we improve the level of our ocean? The ice is dissolving. The mangrove forest is becoming uh, more of an open forest now. How do we improve justice, equality within our system? How do we reduce racism? I think someone mentioned in the exercise we had, racism is a major problem uh, of Nigeria. Yes, I, I mean, I agree with you, but how do we stop all this? How do we fight uh, insurgency with the support of ICT for D? You know? And if you look at these uh, 17 goals, uh, I would like to take them one by one. If you take goal number one, no poverty. A lot of interventions are, are really, really ongoing, you know? Because in reality, we have over 2 billion people in the world that have no bank account. Over 2 billion. If people are not getting bank account, that means they are financially excluded. And that means they may not be part of the digital economy. But digital economy is a cashless economy. You know, you have seen uh, when the federal government decided to change our currency, you know, cash trap, people become hopeless, people become uh, restless. And the digital platform failed to, to work because of the pressure. So, but I know a lot of work is going on to bridge this uh, first goal. I know Bill and Melinda Gates, uh, International Telecommunication Union uh, and the rest of the organizations are working tirelessly to see that we have a good financial inclusion system in our country. Then zero hunger. You know, the UN Food uh, and Agriculture, uh, FAO, and even in Nigeria, a lot of work is ongoing. I know even in Nigeria, the federal government is leveraging uh, 
agri-tech to, to accelerate uh, food security in Nigeria. Uh, to be able to have uh, agricultural practice uh, driven using data uh, and as well as other ICT enabled solutions like the IoT uh, to improve crop yields and productivity. And uh, probably, if there is a chance uh, to support uh, farmers to be able to save more money. Uh, by using less fertilizer as well as by using and I believe going forward uh, we may be able to see more from the university from the industry uh, to accelerate uh, agri-tech then if you take good health and well-being I think the life expectancy rate in Nigeria is increasing I remember looking at the data not long ago, uh, we have about uh, I think if I remember about uh, 46, 45 years life expectancy rate as at 1999. But within uh, the last uh, 20 something years, I have about 54, 56 because of advancement in uh, food security, advancement in vaccination, uh, and also scientists are using these emerging tools in, in drug discovery. So the WHO uh, is doing a lot of work around supporting healthcare, and even during COVID-19, uh, we have the NCDC, where we see information coming our way every day to show where there is much incidence of COVID-19 infection, and how to get uh, vaccination, and how to even be served by leveraging the, the personal hygiene. Then if you take the SDG4, I think is a uh, quality education. Uh, I remember about three years ago, just before COVID, uh, we hosted the uh, International Telecommunication Union, the chair of the ITU for Africa, Andrew Rujeji, uh, together with uh, the chair for the International Labor Organization. They visited us, visited our university, where we had a discussion about possibility of uh, reducing or improving uh, quality education. I do at the same time productivity of our institutions. And you know, a lot of project has been launched by the United Nations. I was involved in the Ration Unlimited, it's launched in Nigeria, uh, uh, Reimagine Education, uh, and is championed by UNICEF and ITU, and even Giga Connect. Giga is a project run by ITU in Nigeria where all schools are they mapped and they were put in a pipeline for the possibility of being connected to the internet uh, to support data sharing, M&E, &E, and the rest. So if you have time, you can just search GIGA, G-I-G-A, uh, ITU is, is one of the prominent, but to be sincere with you, we are not doing well with this GIGA project. We're not doing well around that. Uh, many neighboring countries uh, and uh, equality, uh, the data coming out of our way is not good. I think if I remember, only about 62% of men have access to the internet about uh, 57 of female have access to the internet so which clearly means um 43 percent of women in the world have no access to digital technology or have no access to the internet while men have just about uh, 38 so that gap is is really big and this is uh not good if you take the least developed countries uh 31 percent of men have access to the internet while women Tip. So if you take something like Nigeria, so only about 19% of women in Nigeria have access to the internet. That means completely uh, they are caught up uh, of the digital economy ecosystem. So, I mean, if you have time, you can search gender parity index uh, that have to do with education, with access to the healthcare, access to even loan. So how can women have access to banking facility and I didn't do this research, and I think someone, maybe one of us can do this research to see how many women in Nigeria have access to bank account. Uh, if you look at it, you clearly see that women are not really being taken care of. Uh, then if you take the goal number six, clean water, how do we, how can we have a, a more, better way to reduce water waste? Uh, I remember talking to a friend sometime in December, he's an Indian guy, but been in Nigeria for 35 years. He said to us that India is undergoing water crisis. 
and India ban rice uh, exportation out of experience uh, sharp increase in rice price in Nigeria. And India said we are no longer producing rice because every bag of rice we produce out of India uh, is costing us uh, thousands of gallons of water. So it's better for us to, to be safe. And they were able to get to know this because they have smart sensors, they have uh, remote sensing, they have digital tools that managed uh, the water asset of the country. And even in developed country, you have seen how uh, waste water is being managed and refined. And all this happened through the support of digital technology. If you take goal number seven as well, affordable and clean energy, uh, the ICT is supporting uh, is supporting how renewable energy has been developed and champion. Uh, I was privileged last year to visit uh, IBM Nano and even University of Sydney Nano. And the major work I see them doing with the Nano is around supporting clean and renewable energy and also the future computing. Yeah, because as you put more users into the internet, as you put more learners uh, into the digital learning platform, you are increasing the computing size. Uh, and if you add the computing size, it means you need to have more energy. So a lot of work is ongoing now, uh, championed by ITU, Microsoft, uh, Google, name it, these big guys working together to see how they can have smart data center, smart energy. Because if you need to generate more energy, you need to build more dams, uh, you need to cut more trees, you, know, you need to do a lot of construction work, but through smart and sustainable energy system, a lot of work is, on, is ongoing on. And even metering. In Nigeria, we waste electricity, even in my village, because people are not metered. Nobody turn off light. 247, you see light on. In fact, in my village, I've seen people just directly connecting bulbs to the uh, to, to the poles and complete no switch over. So that means a lot of energy has been waste in the afternoon. But if you are using metering, most of us are very, very careful now with the way we use energy because we, we pay from our noses. So this metering that we have in Nigeria is because as a result of a uh, collaborative effort on going on by various stakeholders. Even World Bank gave us loan uh, to, to have meters, because when you have meters, uh, automatically uh, people will be able to save energy. Then decent work and economic growth. Uh, I'm very active in this goal. I've done a lot of work around this. Uh, and even part of this idea's initiative is to see how youngsters uh, can have decent work. For people that are working, our expectation is if you go through this digital uh, learning program, you should be able to improve your uh, quality of, uh, of living. At least you are more informed than, uh, than you were before. So, uh, and there is a lot of ICT support, innovative uh, project uh, supporting uh, youngsters. I know Google, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, they all have digital learning platform built for free. And they even give a lot of incentives, even I know for SME and startup. If you have a startup, Google is there for you. They can give you cloud platform and compute uh, facility just to start your bill as your revenue begins to go over. And I, I know even many banks in Nigeria. I know Fidelity Bank, I know Zeni Bank, and a few other banks, they have financial incentives uh, supporting entrepreneurs uh, and, and also uh for student support uh for smes uh, for them to be more productive because as more companies become more productive learning in the sme become very very strong the sme will begin to provide quality and better uh services to the customer. so ict is being used very very widely uh to achieve uh, sdg number eight and this is a work that i know uh, even the federal government is is doing on now apart from these ideas program, I think it's about $200 million grant, I mean, launched from the World Bank to support digital skills development. There is also another one called iDice to support creativity. And I think this program is championed by Ministry of Creativity and Culture. 
Uh, and beyond that, there is also a recent program launched by the federal government. I was privileged to be part of the event uh, in Gombe about three weeks ago. They call it Onti, Outsource to Nigeria Initiative, OTNI. Uh, it's a program uh, run by the Office of the Vice President together with public and private partners uh, to support outsourcing business, call center. If you have issue with your MTN SIM card or your bank, you put a call to the call center. That call that been picked up by someone, that someone may not necessarily be in Nigeria. I know the telcos have done very well to give this market out for us in Nigeria, but if you call, in fact, I call, I, I bank with uh, one of the bank in Nigeria, and when I call them, a Ghanaian woman picked my call. And from her accent, uh, I feel very, very disturbed, and I just cut the call. Uh, because this is opportunity been uh, going out of Nigeria, and for every call uh, we put uh, to Ghana, uh, Ghana is getting dollar. And to be honest with you, uh, most of these big guys are taking this opportunity of the, the headquarter of Twitter is in Ghana for Africa. The headquarter for Microsoft for Africa is in Kenya. Kenya, I don't think they are up to 15 million. And the headquarter for IBM is also in Kenya. The headquarter for Cisco, Nemit, are all in either South Africa, Kenya, Rwanda, and even Senegal. Even the UN body, even most of the big conferences that happen uh, in Africa, they go to other African countries. But the federal government, uh, I can see a lot of commitment from them to see how young stars can. And, and the, all, the easiest way to give young stars job is by putting them into digital innovation uh, framework. Then improving infrastructure. I think I don't need to talk much about this. Energy, how do you reduce less energy? How do you use less energy, less water? How do you improve uh, efficiency in the construction industry? Uh, how do you build smart, sustainable, and inclusive neighborhood. I think it's a project that I know the federal government is also working with international partners. So if you look at goal number 10, how do you reduce inequality? You know, how do we support people that are in hard reach area? So the palliative and incentive that data is given don't really go to the uh, to the beneficiaries. They have no means of identity. They don't have identity. In Nigeria, we have about um, uh, about uh, 200 and I think 20, 30 million. But unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, only about maybe I say 110 or 120 have uh, bank accounts. Uh, and that's why you see corruption as a major problem that you said, because the big men take the money and they put it in their pocket. Because these poor have no identity, they have no means, we have no way to, to track the poor. So I think it's a serious issue that I think the federal government uh, need to uh, take it very, very serious uh, to, to accelerate SDG. Then if you take uh, goal number 11, sustainable and sustainable city and community, it's also part of what we discuss in, in the order, because these goals have interlinkage. Responsible consumption, how do we manage the waste, how do we manage our environment? That if you take climate action, I think we have talked about this extensively. Uh, and I've said this many times, climate change is, is real. Uh, and most of our problems, as I've said, insurgency are something that have to do with uh, global warming because farmers are no longer going to farm. And uh, the reality is if we don't have a sustainable and balanced ecosystem, uh, we can run into, into, into big problem. Then if you take uh, life below water, uh, life on land, you know, you can see how uh, even uh, pirates, you know, all these uh, guys that are, our sea asset is the money. Even Nigeria recently organized the, the blue economy. When you hear blue, blue economy, it means uh, water system. We don't really exploit our water system and waterways in Nigeria. Until recently, where federal government have Ministry of Marine and uh, Blue Economy. If you go to UAE, I always like Dubai. If you go to Dubai, you go to Dubai Creek. On average, you can see up to 50 to 100 uh, uh, cruise ships. And I, I do a lot of cruise whenever I go to Dubai. And I do counting. I was talking to one of my mentors, Professor James. One day we cruise. 
uh, by the Dubai uh, trip. And we counted 21 people working in one ship uh, from the bar attender, from the guy serving the food, from the captain, uh, the, 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 the chief, uh, from the dancers, the belly dancers, uh, the DJ who is controlling the uh, the music system uh, from the shift control system. Over 21 people working in one shift. So on average, if you say 21 people working in one shift, there may be 50 ships. If you add the number, it's a big number. And you count how many people ride or do the cruise a day. Each ship can take up to 100 to 250 uh, guests and maybe 100 dirham. 100 dirham it's about $36 now, if I can remember, and maybe around $30,000. So it's a big, it's a big economy, blue economy. Many counters are leveraging their waterways. Uh, I think in Nigeria, we had the, the Boroport where Peregrine dredged the river. Uh, I had experience of uh, Boroports, something that I don't like telling. So I think, uh, how do we leverage, how do we use this water system to make it more clean? And with the digital technology, you can have sensors put around uh, to measure the quality of uh, Latin America and Asian countries, ice fish. And they're cheaper than the fish that we have best from our neighborhood. Catfish is, I think, more expensive than uh, the ice fish we buy, I think, in Kilogram, because we did not harness uh, our, our waterway. So it's important if we can begin to think about how can we use digital technology? I have a friend recently that I met uh, in, in his university. He's looking at developing sensors that will tell or measure the quality of the water. And government can use that to, uh, to accelerate the marine ecosystem. And one of my friend, Dr. Bamanga, uh, who happens to be a staff of, is that deputy director now at Nimasa. We are all and did pages sometime with him. I got to know this Blue Economy Award the first time from him in 2012. And as I'm talking to you now, he's currently attending a conference run by International Maritime Organization. And all what he is doing is around how do we harness our marine system? Because if you go to the Niger Delta, uh, very heavy, uh, very long waterway, but we don't really use them. And uh, if you don't harness the resources around your neighborhood, uh, it's a big issue. If you go to Arab countries, if you visit Arab countries, you go through the desert to do uh, safari. So I think that is a lot of work around uh, leveraging life on land and life below the water. And I've seen a lot of uh, interventions. People are building zoos. Uh, people are dredging fake river uh, with the aid of digital uh, innovation. So Please take time, go through these SDG goals. They are very, very critical ecosystem that I think we need to explore. If you have time, if you have time, please, um, if you have time, please uh, go to this YouTube. I think I've added YouTube channel uh, in the, uh, below the, the, the goals. Uh, this YouTube I mean, channel, if you can click on it, I'm going to share this with you immediately after this class, so you can, you can, you can uh, have a look at it. So uh, I'm seeing some of your engagement. I think Abdullah and the team will definitely respond to some of your observations that you put together. So ICT and SDG. So if if you look at SDG and what ICT is doing. Uh, for the SDG is practically things around uh, how do we support uh, these indicators, how many youths over adults are now using uh, ICT, and how many people own a mobile phone, uh, and how many, how much kilometers, or is it available in every community and, and the rest. So, and if you look at how many people are connected to the broadband internet, I don't mean 2G or broadband, high-speed internet. And these are indicators that uh, as you progress, if you go to the SDG website, or you just do a simple Google search, a lot of work has been put together uh, to, to support ICT, for IC, SDGs for ICT. 
So Yeah, so at the same time, I think I was able to summarize uh, some of my thoughts. Uh, I got this uh, this uh, this work from have time, you know, go through all of them, and you could see the positive impact of ICT. You know, sometimes because I'm I am an ICT for the researcher, so we spend much of the time lamenting about what SDD is not doing. But the reality is SDG is supporting a lot of uh, transformation globally. Then let's talk about learning poverty, skills, digital skills, and generative AI. I like talking about this topic. Uh, this is just uh, a bit of what I presented or I interacted with uh, last week, two weeks ago when I was uh, in Ghana. I attended ICT for the 2024 conference and I was privileged uh, to be in a panel where we discuss uh, the role of ICT for D but, but particularly the generative AI on uh, skills development and that's why I put it learning poverty we have learning poverty issue in Nigeria children are not learning we have skills crisis we have business skills crisis as well and we have generative AI and generative AI is seriously militating uh, 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 our ecosystem now. And I think if, if we don't take it very serious, we may run into trouble. So this is learning poverty. You know, globally, uh, youngsters are not learning. Globally, 59% uh, of male are not learning the minimum requirement of education or learning in the school 59 percent you know but learning poverty happen more uh, in, in in male male are not learning but women are much more learning than than the men so it's a big issue if you know globally in every country you go half of the children are not getting the right skills and it's not only a Nigerian issue if you look at uh, region by region or continent by continent Globally, it's 56, 58. But if you look at Sub-Saharan Africa, 84% of our children that are going to school are not learning the minimum arithmetic that they need to learn. And 88% of our youngsters and children, they are not learning how to read better. So if you cannot read, completely means you cannot be part of the literacy cycle. Because your ability to read is what will make you to even comprehend, understand uh, how things go on. And this is not my data. This is coming from UNESCO. It's, it's a very serious issue that I think uh, all hands must be on deck uh, to, 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 to resolve. If you look at Oceania, uh, Northern Europe, and America, you know, a bit of uh, you know, improvement. But when you have this, and you're talking about ICT, and ICT is taking the region culture. While we are growing up, uh, you know, I'm not a Generation Z. You know, I think I'm a millennial, <laughs> maybe. You know, or I'm not. I know I'm not a baby boomer. You know, we don't have access to this tool. We don't have access to television. We only watch television occasionally. But now children have access to digital content, two four seven WhatsApp message, keep coming, tweets, TikTok. In pandemic, so with this massive content available, how can you uh, support learning? And that's why learning poverty has been excavated widely. So how do can we use these digital tools? Talk about AI to improve learning. And I've said this yesterday: productivity grows in developed country. 1960 is four percent. Now it's just one percent. Even though we have these tools, we have this connectivity. And we have a network, but still productivity is not good because of the learning poverty. So I'm not talking about digital education or learning poverty here. I'm just trying to make a reference that how can we use these tools to support uh, this? I mean, most of us have tablets. We have smartphones. Are we giving our kids this tablet to learn better in the school? Or we spend much of our time just texting, WhatsApping, 
uh, with the outside community. I mean, it's fun to interact with the outside world, but it's really, really very important. We begin to, you know, uh, enable or support a uh, transformative approach in our homes. You know, because when you have this tablet, you have Airtel SIM card in Nigeria, you can access over 16,000 digital learning content developed and curated by federal government and the UNICEF. So for every one hour I spend chatting or texting my friends, I know for every 10, 15 minutes, I just hand over my phone to my daughter to access the digital learning plot, which one will give me more impact. So that's, that's, that, that's the notion of this. So, but if you look at it, this is much more scary. If you look at learning poverty crisis, lack of learning happened mainly in the school. If you look at children that will never be to school, children that have left school, and children that are in the school but they are not learning. If you add the number, it's really, really crazy. So I'm going to share this with you. Uh, have a look at it. How do you this learning poverty gap with the support of digital technology? You know, when schools have no teachers. In my local government, where I came from, uh, we have many schools that have just one or two teachers, and those teachers are not qualified. So what are you telling me? So what about COVID-19 that render most of the children out of school? And I said this all the time. I had a guest recently that came, uh, a researcher from the US. I hosted him for about uh, two, two, two days. And we were going around and he's looking at the learning poverty and digital education. And I said to him, in my neighborhood where I live, there was a day I counted over 150 children roaming around from my neighborhood to my office. And this is during school hours. And I remember uh, sometime in January, I traveled to Kodena by train. And while moving through the bush, the beautiful landscape, I counted over 500 youngsters, maybe in the field farming or roaming around with the cattle or just been roaming around the street or scavenging uh, in the dump site, dump site. So it's a serious issue. The issue of learning poverty is, is real. And I read this report from, uh, from School of Oriental and African Studies is part of the University of London system. And they said post COVID-19 in Nigeria, over 20 million, I think over 20 million children may never go back to school. In my state where I came from, we have over 1 million children that are out of school. How do we track them? How do we identify them? How do we support them? How do we use AI tools to take them off the road and put them back to school? Because if you didn't take them back to school or back to meaningful place of work, uh, they could be danger to us and insecurity you know many schools in zampara in kb i mean in zampara in kazina in, you know, in niger yoga and the rest of them over 10 of them are out of school many school never opened for the last five years that means completely more children are getting into uh, into crisis so look at this table this is our education overview gender parity is high and in a rural community or four family, only one in four girls attends uh, or complete gestures. So when girls are not educated, not in school, not in job, not in employment, it's a big issue because they will definitely uh, not be part of the economic system. And you know, there is this notion that if girls are not educated automatically, their children may not necessarily go to school. And I know someone is doing a research correlation between mothers that are out of school, that have never been to school, and the prosperity of their children. And that's why many countries are working very hard, tirelessly to, to bridge the the gap in access to education. And if you look at our budget as well, we are not spending much money into, into education, about 1.97 money spend into education you know we i i used to do this joke uh, usually if you look at how much we spend for for wine and champagne and coca-cola and henneken probably we may spend more than what we are spending for education even what we spend for pomo for pounderiam and amala 
you know? So, I mean, it's a serious issue. I had this discussion with my mentor. I keep talking about Professor James. We just lab over it. You know, even most of our universities that we run, we spend more money on entertaining guests than what we spend for research. And this is an area where uh, I do my work. Many universities spend 250 times for entertaining guests buying ukazi soup, oha, and amala, and pounded yam, or two and shintapa, and puka, uh, than what they spend for research, ICT, and connectivity. I've known a university that I've never gotten internet connection for over two and a half years. And when the buy and solo and the 10 years so almost every day, eating three square meal, I mean, I mean, three cost meal for every night, entertaining guests, but the library have no connectivity. It's high. So it's a serious that I think we need to really take very seriously with digital tool, with WhatsApp, uh, with YouTube channel, uh, we could educate more and we could have uh, a much more uh, prosperity going forward. Then, if you look at the skill mismatch, I got this uh, data from one of the presentation by uh, the World Bank. It's one of the recent. Uh, so, education have crisis. How can we use this advanced tool to address this problem? I'm not going to waste much time into this, so you could read on your own and, and comprehend. Then, if you take about the the category of uh, People that are with our ecosystem, children that are in education, how can we use this tool to support children that are in, the, that are in education? How can we give them a skill, you know, with, with, with this tool? What of children that are out of school? How do we bring them back to the skill system? We don't care about the schooling because we haven't gotten money to, to school them. What of children that are already out of school, they have graduated, but they have no job to do? At the same time, what of People that are not in the school, not in employment, and not on any training. How do we this? How do we enable them to the skill? Because I like this word, the skill. Yes, I know how to do handwriting very well. I used to get more marks from my teacher because I can write very well. Now it's no longer available. So if you are learning online, is your ability to 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 type very fast is what matters. Now. It's not about handwriting. If you know how to write, yes, it's before, but now you need to learn how to how to type very fast. So how do you the skill? Things that we know, yes, we know a lot, but is that helping us? If I know how to do, I mean, divide the dx, or I know how to do painting with my hand, now it's no longer by hand. It's by leveraging emoji. It's about 3D, 2D. So how do we enhance Current line. I think what we are doing now with you is not just a new learning, but uh, it's more like we're enhancing your learning. We are hoping going forward, going forward, uh, you could use what we learn or what we are doing together to help your uh, uh, expectations. So I think I've spent much of my time. So then let's go into food for thought. So let's look at this data, Nigeria visibility in the global ranking. My apology, this data is not up to date. I think I, I, I did this uh, about three months ago. So um, I, sis I sincerely apologize for not going to the website to, to get most recent data. But I think most of the data are, uh, are currently uh, still uh, similar. So Nigeria with over 200 million people the best GDP in Africa. We are number 31 best economy in the world in terms of GDP ranking as curated by uh, International uh, Monetary Fund. And, you know, over 198 million active telephone lines in Nigeria and 286 connected lines, you know, and the density is 104%. So which means our tables, our dogs and cats probably have SIM card. So an internet user, about 184 million internet users as of 2021. And if you look at 29, because I'm tracking this indicator. So we are adding more users into the internet, over 50 million social network users. I think now it's over 100 million. 
social media users in Nigeria. I had someone talking about Facebook users, about LinkedIn, about what. So a lot of people are now using social media. But in terms of human development index, Nigeria is ranked 161 out of 189. And if you have time, go to the internet and search HDI by UNDP. You could see a massive information talking about uh, the SDG and the UNDP. Then Human Capital Index, we are ranked 153 out of 157. And in 2020, 2018, ranked 152. So we are going down. So we are just basically above chart. I think Central Africa Republic, and uh, I think Niger, if I can remember, you know, South Sudan, we are just on top of them in terms of capital index. And that human capital index, if you go to the internet, you do a heavy search, you could see the company that come together and have the, uh, the HCI. Then in the World Intellectual Index, the WII is not World War II, it's World Intellectual Index. Nadera is ranked 129 out of 114. That means we're not curating our community. And that's why last year I applied for uh, partnership and we got a partnership with uh, World Intellectual uh, Property Office. It's one of the UN office. And together with the help of my colleague, uh, we delivered uh, summer school supporting youngsters to have idea around how do we protect, how do we register, how do we curate our intellectual property. And this year, uh, we are hoping to also do similar, and we're even thinking of expanding it up. I think that's the only physical summer school we had last year in Africa. And I think out of the five that we had globally. So Nigerians are not registering their patent, their copyright, uh, their ideas. If you go to patent registry, your patent per head, we're not ranked better, even though we are too creative, but we take it for granted. Because going through the ranking, I mean, going through the uh, patenting or copywriting or protecting your intellectual property is linked to opportunity of getting more money or recognition as you progress. Then in terms of e-government, in terms of how government services have been delivered through the internet, we are ranked 143 out of 193. I think uh, it's not good enough. Uh, in terms of, because I'm going to show you this in the next slide, in Nigeria, we are number four in terms of technical, in terms of know-how and number of people that use digital tools. But in terms of using this tool to provide public services, we are 142. So it's a big number. And in terms of e-readiness, I think I like this e-readiness and e-participation. You know, our ability to use digital tools. Most of the Nigerians are online, but they cannot they cannot even use google map i have many friends that don't know how to use google map i have many friends that don't know how to use zoom and people ask questions that they're not even supposed to ask you know because our ability to participate in the digital economy is not very very strong and that have to do with our digital literacy and competence which i have talked about it yesterday so if you have a smartphone, you have internet, and you are not improving yourself as a human, as a human, it's a big issue. It's a big issue. It's a big issue. Okay, someone said I'm not sharing my, my screen. Let me do it again. I'll be able to have my screen. Uh, I'll do it again. Yeah, I think you should be able to... We look at my screen now. Yeah, yeah, I think that is. Yeah, I think you should be able to have my screen by now. So, in terms of this is food for thoughts, I think it's an opportunity for us to leapfrog. If we have the platform, I think we have leapfrog in Nigeria uh, with regards to the digital uh, development. But I think we can do can do much better than this. So can you see my screen? Yeah, I mean, we'll upload the video. I can see you put in comment. Yes, would absolutely 
will absolutely uh, put I don't know why you cannot see my screen. If you can see my screen, yeah, the screen is still, the screen is still, okay, I think it's, it's coming up now. I'm going to, to do my screen now. So you should be able to do the screen. By now. I mean, people say they want to go and pray. Yes, you can go and pray. But uh, the reality is we put the video. We're not stopping you from going to pray. You can go and pray. Uh, in the meantime, we'll share the, 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 the video. So if you cannot uh, view my screen, do let me know. And that's why we make it uh, uh, a bit more interactive. Yeah, so that we can we can interact. So, so I think let me just go back to the light. And I think we're not really doing too good with this. I would suggest go to the tennis side GDP drops in Nigeria, HDI, HCI, World Index, e participation, e readiness, e governance index. That is too many. Indexes. One of my master students, I asked him to do this work for me. I think uh, I was able to come up with about 210 indicators and showing uh, where Nigeria is and, and where we are anticipating to, uh, to, to move. Even, even the SD ranking, SDG are now used to rank uh, most of our. So I think the beauty of it is if you look at what we have in the screen. The left-hand side, uh, I think I've said this, we are number four in terms of technical know-how global. I think it's an opportunity for us to leverage this. But if you look at even medium and high-tech industry, we are number 43 in the world. You talk about ease of doing business, uh, cyber security regulation, publication. So actually, I'm not doing bad in some of these things. But if you look at the right-hand side, Wikipedia edit. Uh, I had this workshop last year, and I asked my participant how many of you edit something in wikipedia none and that's why most of the thing you see about nigeria is is fake i have a friend wilson that works with the wikimedia foundation is part of the wikipedia uh, i think he did about four or five workshops in our university and he told me one time that the wikimedia is changing the narrative of africa if you go to google and search kano or you search contagora or you search in Dufo Alife, or you search in Newi, what you see is war, is hunger, is poverty, is malnutrition, is hopelessness. But with the support of the Wikimedia Foundation, they are changing the narrative, populating more pictures into the Wikipedia, so that Nigeria could be attractive. If you go to the internet and search Rwanda, you see the beautiful waterfall, the beautiful mountains you see the green the vegetation everything looking so nice but if you search Kano, what you see in Kano is the 1912 1930 uh, old buildings and people looking malnourished and so the, the reality is a lot of things are, are really changing so our ability to contribute and this content development you don't need to really go to office and work you don't need to travel to make money you know to, to contribute to the nation, but even make your country attractive. I had a workshop about, I think, two months ago uh, in Sudalabia University, Kafan Hausa, and I think over 300 to, I think over 300 students in the workshop. And I asked them, how many of you are making up to $100 per month? And none. I said, okay, $50. I think only one or two guys put their hand up. And I say, if you have mobile phone and you have internet and you can generate content, you can easily uh, begin to make money. You can crack a job and make money. You can put a song. You can become a social media influencer. So and the reality is majority of us just use this tool to broadcast hate speech, to, to, to excavate danger and you know, I, I just, 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 uh, you know. So I, I said that is too much opportunity for for us to to really, really uh, begin to to make a difference uh, with the support of these digital technology tools. And there are tools that are so ubiquitous and, and easy. Nobody taught you how to do WhatsApp. 
And most of these tools that you can use to make money or to support yourself, they are as simple as WhatsApp. They are as simple as, uh, as Facebook. No, but the reality is ICT for D is not supporting uh, the poor. ICT is only supporting insulin that are already strong. And I always used to ask this question. Are we building a wall we want with ICT in Nigeria? Or maybe in your village or in your house? So I think it's a question that most of us may likely need to, uh, to ask. And I like working with uh, data. Uh, this data I got from Smedan. Smedan stands for Small and Medium Development Agency. Uh, just last month, I hosted the, uh, the DG of Smedan, Charles, and I engaged him in, in a very serious conversation. How, how can we turn this, uh, this data? Uh, majority of our companies, I think 99% of our uh, SME have an average uh, less than 50 dollars per month so if most of your companies are not making more than fifty thousand dollars in the month i mean this is another in the month it's a big issue even though the data is a bit old but nothing really much change you know so if you look at the medium enterprise agencies 0.01 percent just about 0.1 percent then you look at the small enterprises that employ of 10 to 49. So most of us, what we do, we are not really running a business, micro business. Uh, maybe we just buy Rafa and we put it in our WhatsApp status and say we are doing a business. And I did a work for one of the United Nations agency. I, I visit uh, the East uh, around Onicha, Abba, Uma here. And when I ask somebody, what's your profession? They say, I'm a trader. Very few of them say they are businessmen. Uh, majority said we are traders because they are just trading, you know, just taking wrapper or buying bag of pure water, get ice and put, just pull it up and sell. You are not adding much value. You know, if you buy water, uh, you take a flavor, you make it into maybe ginger, and uh, or maybe zobo or maybe something. Uh, so you're adding value. You could, you could make more money by not just taking the water and just add water and then sell. So if you just go to a bar and buy a pa and cut it into five yards and sell, you are not adding bad, but if you have a tailoring a machine in your house, you do a tailoring, you could sell up to 50,000 naira as against what you said, maybe 7,000 naira. So value addition is not really, really very much, but with the support of digital transformation, with support of AliExpress, uh, gig economy, gig workers, Businesses could leverage branding, they could leverage packaging. You know, I had an encounter with one of my friends that does things around food processing. And I said to him, with due respect, I'm not going to pay more because you use nylon bag to tight uh, this. Why not you go to the market and do a proper packaging, sell it, you know, put your brand, and, I mean, just make more presents. But how can I do it? I said, but you can do it. Uh, many businesses, many business support services are already online. So I think it's an opportunity for, for us to think about this. If I'm getting 50 naira, how can I use digital tool? And the beauty of it is uh, with digital platform, I'm talking about e-commerce, uh, e-marketing tools that are online, Twitter. I mean, I have a friend uh, who is also part of this uh, uh, engagement, I think, uh, uh, is currently connected. And he does a lot of sales by just posting things in his uh, WhatsApp. You know, you don't need to, there is no need to have a bench. You know, as you put your catalog online, someone order, you call the man wholesaler and you give the address and you have it. Even last week, I got a delivery for my wife. You know, I, she made an order and someone delivered through my office and, and I brought it for her. So a lot of opportunity for youngsters to be part of the digital economy. And digital economy is about building computer center. It's not about building uh, remote uh, workspace. I mean, you can do this. I'm doing this teaching from my, from, my, from, my, from my bedroom. It doesn't matter. I mean, majority of you are from your shops, from your offices. Uh, some are even from your farm. So it's an interesting thing to see that these tools support 
SMEs, and we need to really begin to see how businesses begin to. I mean, I had this chat, as I said, with Charles, uh, the DJ of Simeda, that we need to leverage training of small to medium enterprise owners and even the workers to begin to be more productive. And by that, they could increase their revenue and we could earn money uh, in the local currency. Then also, if you look at uh, this data also from Simeland, uh, when you have over 53% of uh, employment sector in the country doing wholesale and retail, 52% doing bigger than even agriculture. So only about 10% of our population are doing agri because agri is no longer attractive, maybe. Then manufacturing about 13%. Uh, but the most scary part is wholesale. You know, if you look at the population, there is a good correlation. Uh, 16,000 are male, 14,000 are female. So female is a uh, 62%, and this one is 45%. So it's a big issue. Although there is an issue with the data, but I just have to put it as it is. You know, I got this from Simeda. So if you are, the majority of your businesses are who sell are written, it means very little value addition. If you take education, and that's why we have learning poverty gap. I talked to one of my former students and he said he's double. I said, but you know how to do this skill. Why not you begin to say, I want to do tutorial for all the children in my neighborhood. I want to teach you how to do robotics. You know how to do robotics. You know how to fly a drone. Why not uh, buy a drone and uh, gather maybe 50 youngsters from your neighborhood and charge them just 10,000 naira per month and just teach them how to fly a drone? Maybe all the photographs. I mean, so there is a lot of opportunity to to tap into this and i've said the DJ of smedan and i remember when he came to me he came together with uh, the the essay to the president on uh student matters and i was able to uh, to take them through this data to say to them that uh there is no reason i don't see reason why nigerians would be unemployed there is no reason because there is a lot of work government can uh, can put together but that this requires a lot of change of uh, policy. It requires uh, the government to say we are no longer in the business as usual. And it requires government to put a massive infrastructure. It requires the youngsters to be put under uh, a serious uh, model, no longer for the Christmas youth. In fact, one of my brother came to me to say that he got about 750,000 naira from the federal government. I said, well, well, them federal government, but the, the 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 opportunity that we could drive through employment with ICT in Nigeria is really really wonderful. So, and 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 you know, I always uh, really really feel bad when I see this uh, picture. Uh, most of our businesses sells within our locality. If you do pizza or, or you you sell promo or you sell clothes, you sell within your neighborhood. 70% of all our businesses are within our locality. Same town, 72%. Same state, 72%. Then within Nigeria, 62%. But out of Africa, out of your course, and worldwide. And that means we may be experiencing in Nigeria who are not earning money in, uh, in hard currency or in, in green currency. So I think it's something that we could begin to to really really uh improve uh, if there is a need for us to uh to 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 to, uh, to, to, to really make a difference and this is an opportunity for going global it's an opportunity for going africa it's an opportunity of going across and, and with due respect if you have good 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 digital platform you could sell to the world there is no barrier there is no barrier to market there is no barrier to where you can sell i have a friend multara from kazori he sells goruba it's a local uh, fruits and he's doing a lot of innovation and he sells that to the world and i someone talked to us his wife sells uh the dawa is a local condiment and would 
uh, every sense of responsibility. He's very proud about what his lobby is doing. Uh, and all what you know is the internet have no barrier, have no boundary. And uh, you could uh, really do wonder around that. So I'm trying to wrap it up. Maybe I plan to take two hours and uh, do this. Then let's go to the social dimension of the digital divide. You know? So, you know, Peter Sondergaard, I like this is called, and I've been using it for quite a while. He said, information is the oil of the 21st century. And analytics is a combustion engine. Nigeria, yes, we have crude oil, but we have to take it out from Nigeria to Malaysia, to Thailand, to China, process and bring it back to us as a refine. Too much money for the export duty, import duty, cargo, haulage, and logistics. So I, I think if care is not taken, we can go through the same process of oil. We have over 200 million people that are connected to the mobile phone, big number of people that are using the internet, social media, massive. But the data has been hosted elsewhere, is in process elsewhere. Revenue is made elsewhere. It's a big issue. I remember in the World Economic Forum of uh, 2022, the German Chancellor then, Angela Merkel, said it's not possible. We have to demonstrate data in Europe. Data sovereignty. If you generate data in Europe, it must be processed in Europe, and you must give tax. The revenue you generated from the data must be paid to the European countries. And I'm going to show you the Bloomberg Index. As if, so, and then Adebayo by issue too, the former minister of digital economy, I mean communication of Nigeria said, ICT can do better than what the crude oil can do. Yes, I believe in that, but uh, maybe we have to put some some serious effort towards that. And also, I think I've said this, uh, I got this call from World Bank. World Bank said to us, digital technology had boosted growth, expanded opportunity, and improve service delivery yet. The aggregate value drive from this intervention has fallen short and is unevenly distributed. I think from our earlier discussion, we talk about putting the digital divide, you know, uh, expanding opportunity for the marginalized and the rest. So even though Africa, everyone is connected from my village, where I came from, almost every youth and youngsters have digital technology. And the aspiration to have digital tools is massive. Uh, I have someone from my village, not well educated. He has been asking me for a job for over three years, and we have opportunity for him to be a security. And I brought him to a place where he was hired as a security. And his first two months salary, he used the money to acquire a smartphone. Good for him, but maybe he's not using the phone to improve his quality of life maybe so what if he used the money to invest in husbandry maybe he bought maybe they all chicken just attach them close to his so i think it's, it's a time for reflection and i think it's time for us to be think then I, I always like this diagram you know practically for almost every presentation i do I, I used to put this diagram, and I think with due respect, I think I've been using this for the last, I think, six, seven years, and it's still past. Where you see blue is where the impact of ICT is great. ICT can only do wonder if there is existing good value system. If there is none, uh, forget about it. ICT can only support where there is a good system. If you look at this place, this is Singapore. You know, you know, a lot of people is been driven from the ICT. Look at Korea, Japan. So I think it's a point that we may have to reflect as we progress. Then look at this. This is Bloomberg uh, Blowness Index. I've been tracking this index for long, together with my introduction to innovation students. Uh, if you look at the tough guys that have the money, they are basically operating from the technology. Uh, if you look at how much revenue the uh, the accumulator and even increase, if you take for example, I like this guy Larry Pitt and Saji Brin. These two guys, they are the co-founders of Google. But we are using YouTube is their product. For every one minute we spend here, they are making money. 
before COVID, their net worth is $71 billion and 69. Then after COVID, they have 139, almost double. Their net worth almost double because more people are connected to the internet, 139 and 137. I like these guys. But look at this guy, Jeff Bezos, 203 billion as at yesterday. But if you look at 2019 index, he's not part of the league. Right? He's not part of the league. And even if you look at the most richest guy, Bernard Arnold, you know, he's doing consumer goods, but you cannot do consumer goods now if you don't use technology. So practically, he's leveraging ICT uh, to make his money. The same thing with this guy, uh, Warren Buffett. He have a diversified uh, asset portfolio. And Mukesh Ambani Energy. It's an Indian guy, 113 billion as a 2024. But if you look at uh, the old ranking as a 2056 billion, now 113, almost double within uh, five years because people now need renewable energy. So someone asked me recently, he said, What can I do? He's a young guy, about 19 years old boy. He said, What can I do to be rich? I say, You see, do things around energy connectivity, and things around the digital economy, because there is opportunity there. If you look at these guys that have the money that are, you know, and if you look at this guy, Mark Zuckerberg, 173 billion. You know, if you look at the Foreign Reserve of Canada, I'm just doing a search. You know, what is the Foreign Reserve of Canada? You know, to see how much Canada have in their Foreign Reserve. You know, you know, eighty-five billion US dollar. That's the foreign reserve of Canada. Assets now, but this guy have more net worth than Canada, so he is more richer than Canada in terms of you know foreign reserve. And Nigeria, I think we have just about thirty-two thousand. I mean, thirty-two dollars foreign reserve. So it's, I mean, it's a serious issue that I think uh, going forward, I'm not rich, but I always like to look at what rich people are doing and how they're becoming much richer. <laughs> Don't go to lose a lot of money. You know, why? Because of our productivity. He's not happy. He's one of the most unhappiest guy in the world now because uh, Nera is losing value. I have a Chinese friend. Uh, I break my fast yesterday with him. It's a Chinese guy, he's not happy. But he has a lot of portfolio in Nigeria. And as Nera if dive down, he gets us. But yesterday he said to me, he's getting happier because Nera is becoming uh, much more stronger. And that uh, is, is a good deal for him. So, thought, but I'm not going to talk much around this. I'm going to talk about sales and kites when we go uh, into the introduction to innovation costs. But uh, I'm just jumping this, I don't have much time. So what is ICT? What is not ICT for you? You know, in some time I used to put this, Boko Haram, they are leveraging ICT for the tool to accelerate their, their agenda, bring back our girls, digital education, politicians, uh, using a lot of uh, digital tools to improve their political opportunity. Card reader, use an election so i don't have much time to ask about it but when you got this think about this uh, video and say to yourself which one is ict for the which one is not ict for the you know and i like what bill gates said of recent technology can be a major force to advance financial inclusion which can help improve the lives of the poor and the developed. And I mean, that's why Bill Gates is doing a lot of, giving a lot of money uh, to the Bill and Gates Foundation uh, to accelerate financial inclusion. You know, I said earlier, I was uh, in Accra for ICT for the conference and Bill and Gates Foundation, they are the, uh, the, the, the major sponsor of the event. And uh, most of the discussion are focused around financial inclusion which I think is one of the major uh, drivers that 
uh, we will focus our attention. Uh, but we also have to be very careful as we are getting connected. And that's why we talk about digital citizenship. We know what happened in the North Africa, in Syria, I mean, in uh, Egypt, in um, uh, Libya, in in, 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 the, in the other uh, North African countries where you to use the social media to out -turn, turn out the, the current government and things are not really, uh, really, really going too well. I remember during my PhD time, I had a friend, I have a friend, uh, Hayton, like us, and the good thing he told me about what the Libyan government is doing then, uh, it's, it's really uh, fantastic. But now, uh, they are now about to start trying to even uh, get it. So, very important as we get connected, there is proper uh, caution that may be taken to, to protect uh, democracy at the same time to protect youth from being used by the opposition to begin to create a, a bottleneck and crisis and even take uh, of the goodwill our countries have, have built together. I think we have this discussion extensively. I remember I gave a keynote speech uh, sometime last year about the youth, civic engagement, uh, and, and, and good governance. And we had a good, uh, good then I always like to talk about. Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to stop here, uh, but I'm going to share the PowerPoint with you. And next week, we'll jump into uh the the ict uh for the i mean uh the innovation to innovation uh, we'll talk more around that so thank you very much for your commitment for staying really really too long uh, with us and i promise uh, i'm going to share the video immediately uh the link become available we'll share through the telegram i'm not in the telegram uh but i'm going to share the link uh, in the in the uh, learning management software and i think abdul and the team will definitely share the link so if you have any question i think i've already uh, shared the link with you uh, feel free and uh, do let us know if there is anything we can we can do to, to support you and you know we have some difficulty uh, with the learning management software as i'm talking to you now uh, the team are working tirelessly to, to see how we can uh, improve. So I have already shared the link. If you have any question, please uh, feel free and uh, put it up for me. And I'll be happy to respond. Please uh, don't email us directly. If you email me, I may not really uh, be able to answer all the questions because yesterday I got almost uh, 70 emails and I don't really have the time to respond to all the emails. So if you have any issue, please uh, put an email to ideas, ideas at baseuniversity.edu.ng. I think we'll be happy to, 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 to respond to you. So thank you very much. Let me briefly go through the, the chat. If there is any question, I should be happy to uh, to, to, to grab through the pillow work in convert to civil computer. I likely want to play classical computers. Uh, I'm not in technical field. Uh, quantum computing, several Nigerians university are involved in computational research. Look into institution with physics or computer science for potential opportunity. Okay, from curriculum, what next? Thank you. What about the attendance in that website? It doesn't it does yeah. yeah, I think most of the observation you have will have uh, responded so thank you very much for your time and uh, uh see you next week on friday by 11 a.m and we'll share the link thank you